<laughs> okay, everyone, thank you all for coming today. And uh, he's going to do that to y'all too, by the way. As in past uh, uh, coaching searches, Director Baker likes to visit with you all and fill you in as much as he can before he starts his search. And the next time he'll visit with you is when he announces the coach. Um, to avoid uh, talking over everyone, look at me, give me a little nod or a raise hand, and I'll call on you in order that the questions come in. But we'll get our program started with an opening statement from Director Baker. Thank you, Michael. I can go ahead now? Yes, sir. All right. Um, well, thanks for being here. Um, certainly, it's been a challenging uh, year in our basketball program, and I want to give you just a little bit of a, of a window into what the search process will look like. Um, certainly, I know our friends in the media and, and uh, have a job to do, and the state's interest is around our basketball program, and I understand that. So um, first thing I want to do is thank um, Coach Eilert. So uh, Josh is an incredible human being, um, and I think he did a really valiant uh, uh, job um, leading this program during some very turbulent and unprecedented waters. Um, he has my utmost respect, just the way you all saw him in the public eye, but he was the same behind the scenes, just displayed class and integrity, professionalism, um, and uh, I think the world of him. And I think he and I have talked a lot the last few weeks. This will be a great experience for him. Um, I think he has a very, very bright future. Um, in coaching or whatever he were to choose to do in life, um, just because he's a person that uh, has, that I think has tremendous leadership qualities. So uh, never once has he ever made it about him. Not once did he say, why me? He just consistently and constantly uh, provided leadership and, and, and really embraced that adversity as a lesson. And um, I just want to thank him and uh, for everything he's done, but also thank Brandy and Brendan and Emery and Tristan uh, for sharing their dad with us, because it's uh, certainly been a year where he's uh, had to spend a lot of time with us. So um, Josh will remain a member of our family and, and somebody that I'll stay in touch with. Uh, I'll just briefly, before taking questions, uh, outline search process. Um, we'll talk first a little bit about profile. I think it's important uh, that we have somebody not necessarily that has ties to West Virginia, but but will come in uh, and understand West Virginia and West Virginians. Our values, uh, that determination, that grit, that resilience uh, that makes us Mountaineers. And so um, I think if you look back, Coach McCaslin has done that. Uh, Jen Greeny's hit the ground and done that. And um, that's something that you really can't get a feel for until you sit with people and uh, you talk to them about it. We want somebody who's committed to building a championship program um, on the court, uh, but also committed to building leaders off the court. Uh, that's really important that we're helping young people grow and develop and get prepared for life. Uh, we want somebody who can demonstrate knowledge and, plan and has a plan to navigate the complexities that exist in today's college athletics environment. And that changes, as you all know, uh, sometimes daily, weekly, hourly. Uh, just depending on what's happening uh, with court cases and other things. And so um, we particularly know that we have to have somebody who, who can navigate recruiting and retention in the era of the portal and, and NIL. And um, I've seen the way our football program has grown and embraced that and the difference it's made uh, for them. Um, and then lastly, you have to have somebody who not only understands West Virginia, but can embrace being a face of not just WVU, but the state. And, um, you know, you don't get to come to WVU and just be a basketball coach or a football coach or an AD. You're an ambassador for the state. And if you can't embrace that, then this is probably not a job uh, for you. So those are some of the qualities uh, that we'll be looking for. Um, and um, after today, I'll go off the grid. So I'll, I'll send all of your calls to voicemail. Uh, but uh, I do want to give you a chance to, uh, to, to ask questions um, and uh, make sure that uh, you're able to get content for the next few days because I know uh, that there will be an expectation of that. Um, and then uh, we'll go from there. So questions? Great. So a couple other things that may be important to you or you just sort of rank these. Um, sitting head coach versus an assistant, um, power five, group of five, NBA. What, what are the, some of those things that, that matter to you? 
I would say it's the most well-rounded candidate. So I've hired um, candidates with different profiles. I think if all else is equal, you, um, I probably have always had a lean towards somebody who's been a head coach at some level. Um, you just really don't. That's why I think it'll help Josh so much. You really don't know what all comes with that job till you sit in that chair. And every head coach I've ever talked to after that first year is surprised at how little coaching they actually do when you're leading a program like that. And so um, I think those are, are things that are important. But um, if somebody, you know, it, it's, you start out kind of with a menu of boxes you're looking to check and nobody checks them all, right? And so you're, you're kind of uh, seeing that who has the best um, total uh, resume uh, and fits the profile the best. And so um, I would – I would say the one thing that would be um, really as close as I would come to hard and fast requirement is a demonstrated track record of success in Division I. Um, uh, I think especially with where we are right now um, in, in the landscape, that's really important. Um, just to kind of clarify on Josh's situation, he's obviously under contract until April 30th. I assume you probably have a coach in before that. Will, will he stay with the university through the – the 30th, yeah. or was today the day for I mean, No, and we'll honor the contract of all, really all of our coaches. And as I told him last night, this isn't a deal where there's animosity or hard feelings or, um, you know, everybody has been uh, really classy. I mean, all the meetings that we had um, last night were, went uh, as well as could be expected. And so, um, you know, he's here to provide – I mean, he basically told me I'll, I'll do whatever you need me to do to provide stability needed to ensure a smooth transition. And so um, – anything that you would – what you would expect of him is exactly what he's been. And we certainly, um, you know, will con will honor his contract and continue to to uh, engage him in anything that's needed for the program during this interim period. Gentleman right there. Uh, how are you going to look at mid-major candidates coming from mid-major programs compared to Power 5 candidates? Yeah, I, you know, I think you'd compare that total – body of work, all of those experiences. And, um, you know, sometimes a mid-major, a successful mid-major coach has, has at least been in a power program, but sometimes they hadn't, but they have regional recruiting experience. And so every, every profile is different. Um, you know, the, the thing with this search is because uh, uh, we, we started last summer and throughout the course of the year certainly had a chance to follow coaches and candidates around the country, there's there's an old saying, if I had eight hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend six sharpening my ax. I've probably been sharpening the ax for like nine months. And so, um, you know, we've, we've had a chance to look at a lot of um, uh, different profiles during that time. And you just lay them all out. And then ultimately, they start to look alike. And that's where the in-person interview sets in. And you get a chance to sit with somebody and talk to them just philosophically about um, the program, the state, and, and gauge um, if, if they're truly a fit. John? You've been a head coach, so you, you program built. Uh, you've been, you're an athletic director, so you department built, culture built. How do you balance that with today's you know, desire to have immediate success, the portal, and all of that? What do you, what's your message to the fans in that regard? I think because of the portal, there's an opportunity to have some some early success, but I always encourage coaches to build a program and not a team. Um, and um, I, I think when you're onboarding a new coach, it's important they get the culture right, their staff right, uh, their systems right, um, and you have to have patience to allow them to grow into it. Um, you know, there are coaches – um, around the country who have more immediate success because of the portal, but there's still some that takes uh, time. And, um, you know, I suspect that uh, there will be, you know, a lot of our kids exhaust their eligibility. Um, the portal will open up on March 18th. And so um, there could be a pretty significant roster overhaul. Um, but there has been in other programs, uh, as you all uh, may be aware the head coach at uh, Texas Tech, Grant McCaslin, was my head coach at, at North Texas. I hired him there. Um, he played all the way to the NIT championship game uh, last year, which he won before uh, taking the Texas Tech job, and he's put together um, a nice team. Now, they were a little thin. They've had some some injuries with the Washington kid, and that's really put them up against it, and so he probably didn't have the depth he would like to have. Uh, but it, it is possible to be competitive early, and that certainly is the goal. But I always encourage coaches – to build the program 
um, and to focus on that. And the results will come hopefully sooner rather than later, but they'll come. Brent, just a little bit more on the portal, just with it opening on Monday, what would you tell the guys that are on roster or what would you tell them just about the coaching search? Yeah. Um, I had a chance to visit with uh, the young uh, men in our program last night. Um, it was like 2 a.m., uh, so it was a short, short meeting. Uh, we, we, flew, uh, we flew in, and then I hopped on the bus. Um, but I felt like it's spring break, right? And they've had a, it's been a long, hard season for them. So I knew they'd scatter today, and I, did, I, want, I felt like it was important to, to uh, talk to them in person. So um, I just said, um, I know it's been a hard year. Um, I respect and admire they continue to play hard. I mean, to, to lose by 30 to a team and turn around um, a couple of days later and, and had them down 16 and, and should have won the game, um, and, and we let it get away from us. But um, those are the kinds of lessons that you take away, uh, and later on in life you reflect on that when, when you kind of take a gut punch, and we all do. Um, and so I just shared with them that they had my admiration and respect, that I, was, I would be here for uh, them, uh, and that they have my commitment that I'll run the search as, as expeditiously as we can, uh, but it's important to be thorough um, and, uh, and to get the right coach. And so um, I let them know I'd update them when, when we had a, a significant update. And they were very respectful, tired after a game coming in that, that uh, time of night, but, um, and it was a fairly brief conversation. Yeah, uh, Rand, you mentioned the importance of knowing West Virginia and, and you know, know, knowing the people and the, and the likes. Uh, probably the best hires they've made at this school have been, at, at a top level, have been West Virginians, Rich Rodriguez, Catlett, Huggins, you know, I mean, guys who, Bill Stewart, uh, uh, who, who were from the state, Mike Carey. Uh, how are you going to handle that as far as that goes? I mean... Yeah, I, I think you have to be careful not to confuse causation and correlation, right? Um, uh, I, don't, I don't believe that you have to be from here to love it here um, and to be able to have success here. Um, if all else is equal and there's a tie, uh, maybe that helps you. Um, but, um, you know, we certainly, if somebody has ties to the state or is from the state um, and, and they have a nice profile – um, that would, uh, that would work. Uh, and we would look at that, but we wouldn't, you know, I, that wouldn't be the focus. And, um, and I believe that there have also been lots of successful coaches here, um, who, who aren't from here. Um, you know, we've got a, a baseball coach that's doing a great job. We've, we've got, um, a men's soccer coach. He played here, but he's not, he's not from uh, here and, uh, that's doing a great job. So I, I think, there are lots of examples of coaches who uh, are not from here. I think what's important is um, if you're going to have success at WVU, you have to come in with a heart of really trying to connect with West Virginia and West Virginians. And if you do that, um, the people here will rally around you and support you, and I believe that. Great. Timeline. So I know we won't hold you to a, you know exact moment, but do you expect week, month, three months? What's your anticipation of timeline? It's three months. I bet you that I'll get fired between now and then. Um, yeah, so basketball is a harder one to pin down because you have the way the postseason is structured. You have candidates who are in the postseason, and once Selection Sunday comes out, they have to prepare uh, for three opponents in a week probably that they haven't ever seen before, right? So, so they're going to have – uh, to scout the opponent they know they have, and then they got to scout the next two opponents in the next round. And so getting somebody to unplug from that um, and to plug into your search is kind of difficult, and I'm not sure that you would want them to do that. They have a commitment to the university and, and, the, and, their, and the team that they're coaching. Um, so uh, my hope would be that we can go quickly. We certainly have had enough time to, to study profiles and all of that, and it's not like – um, you know, women's basketball a year ago where I had no idea until uh, the day uh, that we played uh, our last game in the, uh, in the NCAA tournament there. So, um, you know, we, we've, got, uh, we've had time. Uh, so I think we're prepared to move pretty quickly, but some of that is incumbent upon the schedule of, of the candidates. And, you know, you reach points in a search where 
maybe there's a candidate that you love that's still playing and you, and you and and so you're they're not available to talk to and you don't want to miss out on some candidates that you really like as well. It's just like recruiting players for coaches, you know, like sometimes you have a, you have to uh, end up going uh, with uh, a different route. And so um, all of that will be moving in real time. Um, but but certainly I would hope uh, that we could get a search completed uh, by the final four, or if not really close to there. And, and, you know, I would hope we could get it done sooner, but, but you usually want to try and have something done by the final four. Um, you've kind of talked a little bit about the, the process has kind of already begun and, and, you know, researching names. And can you give us a little bit more behind the scenes on that when you talk about researching? Is it a matter of just putting names on a list and, and looking up their bios or, you know, have you talked to people who've worked with them in the past and has that list gotten longer, shorter over the course of the last few months? Or When you're asking me that, Steve Uris is in my direct line of sight <laughs> and he's been in my office staring at my at my spreadsheet so much like he, he hates when I call him to see if he can come back in again. So... Uh, it's funny that you're asking that question. I'm having to stare at him behind you. Um, yeah, so generally, I think I've mentioned this before, but but I like to keep a spreadsheet on most sports going anyway because in athletics, and especially when I was at North Texas, um, you know, here at a power conference institution, it's a little bit different, but um, usually you're either having to, to be ready to do a search because you're winning and you may lose your coach for that reason or you're having to be ready to do a search for, for the other reason. And so um, we're pretty ju uh, uh, judicious in doing that. Um, this one, because we had uh, plenty of time uh, several weeks ago, um, I asked Steve uh, to send me the uh, uh, spreadsheet uh, that, that we had uh, going and he said, well, I need to update some. I said, no, don't update it. I always want to spreadsheet. I'm deleting everything in there, and I want to start from, from scratch because I don't want to make sure I didn't miss something, right? And, um, and we had time to do that. And so I went and mined through every school in the country, looked at their staffs, um, and then brought together a screening uh, committee. And we'll talk about that later at the conclusion because I don't want you all beating them down right now. But, um, and then I assigned them conferences and have them do the same thing. Um, and then uh, they bring those to the table and we match them up. And then from there, it's really digging into the data. I'm a big analytics Ken Palm fan. I, I could go back to the five-year history of every team that's currently in the Big 12 and who's been successful and what they were good at. And then all of our candidates, I, I know theirs as, as well. And so um, I would say um, I err on the side of, of really digging into that stuff anyway, anyway but because this timeline has been – extended we we really have done that um and, and it starts to there starts to be natural separations and breaks and the second question the, the one thing you couldn't have possibly known throughout the entire process other schools that you'd be competing against Ohio State has an opening uh Louisville obviously just came up with an opening uh possibly in <coughs> I don't want to speculate or anything but there's going to be some other big time schools out there also looking for coaches, can you just talk about competing uh, against that? Yeah, I think that's where probably some of my connections nationally help, having been on the NIT committee and chaired it um, the last couple of years and um, having coached and having a pretty strong network there. And then, then ADs, I probably know two or three jobs that are going to open that you guys don't have on your radar screen, and I, kinda, and I probably have a pretty good idea what their profile is going to look like and how it compares with mine. Um, there could be some overlap. Um, in candidates, um, but I think you just work through through that, and, and um, I'm not somebody who believes there's only one candidate in the world that can do your job. I think if you have the support system in place and the infrastructure, you know, you have the NIL support, um, then it's really you're finding a profile, but that profile is not one of one, um, and so uh, we'll be pretty thorough um, and am I, do I track those other jobs that are open and, and try to stay to, to know where they're at a little bit, uh, but I don't let that interfere with my process. Um, you know, I, I guess the best way I can put it is um, I'm not somebody who wants to get into multiple bidding on a house.
Uh, usually, if I know it's a multiple bid situation, I'll, I'll just bow out. I'm, you know, I'm looking to get the right house and the right deal and all that. So, um, you know, that's. Uh, I think probably that's the way we would be. We're not going to let what other people are doing affect our process. Um, and I think we'll still come out with a really good coach. Mike, Brendan, um, all this retrospect from the past year you've had. Um, watching how the job works and, and roster construction works and how the teams played as you got to know it. Um, what insight has that given into you for, like, not necessarily who you're looking for, but what that coach has to avoid, repeat, do better, not necessarily concern himself with just intangibles like that? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, th I think when you're in this world now with NIL and Portal and it goes so quickly, um, great coaches still – do a really good job, and those coaches that win at a high level consistently of having a winning culture and assessing that on a move when so many um, recruits are, are just looking at um, NIL opportunities, I think is much more art than science. Um, and to be honest with you, basketball is different than football, uh, even just because of the numbers that you're dealing with. And so that's something that I want to talk to, to successful coaches about. How are they currently doing that? How do they think that could be different um, here? Um, you know, how do you uh, make sure that um, in, a, in a day and time where rosters are much more fluid than they have been in the past and change more year to year, how do you go about building camaraderie, chemistry, um, you know, that sense of, of pulling for, for one, uh, the loyalty to the institution um, that, uh, that I still think is important um, and probably much more difficult to do than it has been in the past. And then kind of along those lines of going off what you said a second ago, if you can get a coach if the surrounding system is strong. Um, the system around the coach right now, where do you think that might need to be uh, strengthened? Not improved necessarily, but strengthened, maybe improved. I don't know, staffing salaries or anything. Yeah, you know, when you look at um, – we have an opening. We always compare everything we have to your closest peer group, which is usually your conference. Um, so where is your pay for head coach? Where is your pay for the staff? Where is your travel budget? Where is – you know, all of those, uh, all those different things. Um, and so I feel really good about where we will be um, in the conference. Um, let's just talk a little bit about this job for a second. This is a great basketball job. I'm, I mean a really, really strong program. Tremendous uh, tradition. We've done it with multiple coaches over the years. Great facilities. I think it's certainly a top ten, maybe top five basketball practice facility. The Coliseum is an awesome venue. If you look on um, Ken Palm, I know a lot of our people at home, I reference Ken Palm, and, and if you're non-sports, you, you probably don't even know what that is. Most people in this room probably do because you cover sports. Ken Palm measures possession efficiency. So it goes all the way down to your possessions versus your opponents and your opponents' possessions versus you and everybody else. And so Ken Palm, we're number two in the country in home court advantage. So, so how they measure that is how we play at home every possession, how we play on the road every possession, and how our opponents play in the Coliseum every possession, and how they play at home every possession, okay? And so um, it's all factored in the system. So it's the number two home court advantage in the country, and it was um, last year uh, too. And so um, that's something that's really important. Fan passion feeds into that. Even the few uh, conversations that we've been having with uh, agents and, and candidates, uh, the passion of our fans come up uh, all the time. I mean, I go back to – um, our Baylor game, it's cold that day, snowing, and we had well over 13,000 people here, and we're, we were pretty much sold out, but, but we didn't have very many no-shows either. Um, there are not very many programs that late in the year sitting at, we were at seven or eight wins at the time, um, that can draw that. You turn the TV on, you see them empty every night. This is a great job, uh, but we do have to make sure we're resourced uh, correctly. Um, and uh, so we have made some adjustments, Mike, to answer your question. Um, and uh, my goal is always to make sure that we're at least in the top half of our, of our peer group and, and, you know, hopefully even higher than that. We have uh, three more questions uh, that we have time for. We'll go to John. I got one more. Pick your basketball mind here. Now, you've had two years to study and evaluate this league. 
the style of play, the way it's officiated, the successful teams. What in your mind is, is going to be required of a coach or a program to be successful in this league that's going to get even more difficult with the four teams we're adding? Yeah, you have to be great defensively, period. I mean, you look in this league over five years, and every team that's finished in the top half um, is generally top 50 in the country defensively. Um, and most generally, people who are that good defensively really value possessions. And so they, you know, they tend to play a little bit slower and they tend to value offensive possessions too. Not a lot of turnovers, high off offensive efficiency. There's just a culture of, of value and possessions that ends up working on – if you have to work so hard on the defensive end to get them, you tend to take care of them a little bit better on the offensive end. And so um, – you know, I, but but you can go back five years and you won't find anybody outside the top hundred in the Big Twelve um, who's finished in the top half of the league out, and they were outside the top hundred defensively. And so um, there's no question that you have to you have to be really good defensively. We'll go back to our gentleman back there. You know, with the right coach and the right new hire, you know, with the current talent that you have and the possible future talent that you could, you could be bringing in. You know, not playing basketball around this time in this building, in the city, it's an anomaly. So how close do you think you are with this right coach, with the tournament, with the talent that you have to get back to the tournament and be, on, be back at the top of Big 12? Yeah, I, I don't think it'll take us long to be competitive uh, nationally again and back in the, in the tournament. I don't know that we can necessarily count on talent that you have in this day and age. I mean, r rosters are – fluctuate and transition a lot anyway, right? And when you have a coaching change, there's definitely going to be some some transition. But, um, you know, I, I do – I think when you look at everything that we have, um, it will not take us long to be very uh, – to be highly competitive again. Back to Bob. Yeah, two highly divergent uh, questions. One uh, – You see what he did? You told him one question, he's asking two. <laughs> Yeah, that's a vet right there. I'll, I'll yeah. combine that. <laughs> no, you're good. You're, you're good. You mentioned fans. Uh, what role, if any, will boosters play in your decision? I mean, how, how do you handle that? Yeah, I think when you um, – when people give their wealth and time and talent to support a program, um, I always – give an ear to those data points. Um, but I also give an ear to, to other data points as well. And ultimately, when, when a hire doesn't work and you have to come into a room like this, I've never seen anybody else sitting with the athletic director. It's always the athletic director sitting there. And so I know that. So ultimately, I have to make a decision – that I feel like is the best decision because I'm the one that's going to, more than anybody else, I'm the one that's going to bear the brunt of that decision, good, bad, or indifferent. And so, um, so I think it's important to get all of the, all of the uh, data points that you can, um, but to not be, uh, not, not to be too overwhelmed with that. Yeah. And the other thing was, what have you learned from this year? Man, that is a loaded question. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, sports are sports, and you're going to have hard times. Um, I think, one, I've just learned how passionate our fans are. Like, this, the, the emotional roller coaster of this season, um, and for them to just keep coming, right, uh, that was – I mean, I, I told a couple of our staff members that Baylor game I was impressed, but it's probably also, honestly, the most pressure I ever felt because I was sitting there thinking we owe it to these fans to to reward this loyalty. So, um, you know, that was uh, – I think that would be one takeaway. I think the other would be just um, – I learned a lot from Josh, honestly, the way he, ha he handled it um, and, and – respect him a lot for the way he handled it so we're uh, running out of time we'll finish up we have justin and then our final question will be great um kind of an obvious question i thought it would have been asked already but uh what um role or or would you um seek out any advice from huggins at all for the search 
and you know, I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, interest-wise, he he may still have some. What you know, what would the situation? Yeah, be like? I think in terms of candidates, I, I would rather probably not get into any individual names um, today. Understand where that why that question would come. I think here's where you could say that my mindset is. Um, I have great respect and admiration and appreciation for what um, co Coach did here. I've said that multiple times. Um, but I think you can be respectful of the past and still be focused on the future. And where my mindset is right now is I need to be focused on the future, and, 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 and that's where it is. Um, doesn't probably answer that question as directly as maybe you would have liked, but I think you can probably um, read into that. You mentioned resources a little while ago. Obviously, in today's world, NIL is a big part of the resource package. So we get the perception that West Virginia's NIL is pretty good in, in this sphere. Is it? Because we don't have the numbers directly. And, you know, can it continue to be to, to make this job that attractive to, to the highest level of coach? Yeah, so um, I I think it is comp has been competitive, and, and I think we will be competitive. Um, um, I've had conversations um, with people about uh, NIL. I've certainly talked to the to the trust a lot. Um, you all know that uh, the trust has been a game changer for us. Um, you know, Ken Kendrick and Oliver Luck, Stephen Ford, that whole crew has been has been great. Um, Ken has been just tremendously generous. Um, it's hard on NIL in terms of rank and dollars because nobody uh, like nobody knows exactly what people have and some people exaggerate their number to the high end and some to the low end um and it and it just goes on and um so uh but i'm confident that that our that ours will be competitive both in the big 12 and nationally um um, and so it ha I believe it, ha it is, and I have every reason to believe that it, that it will be. And, and we're going to ensure that um, our men's basketball program has the resource it needs to be to compete. And NIL is certainly a part of that, and, and we definitely will make sure that that's the case. Thank you, Ren. Members of the media, he will visit with you again on the press conference announcement day. Thank you for coming.